and fold it into thirds. And the test to see if you did it right is if it can stand up. Well, what do you know? Welcome to the vlog. <laughs> dude, mm -hmm. it's filming. Mm -hmm. There's no red button, dude. I can't. They're back here. Yeah, but I can't see back there. I just, I'm so lost every time we do this. Like every You're lost intro. no matter what we do. We're doing it live! <laughs> what is up, guys? Welcome to the vlog. We have another amazing day on the menu today. We've got legs. We've got, we got legs. So, uh. You don't. I don't pay you for this kind of sh Johnny, all right? You had to censor that yourself? <laughs> yeah, you could do that in you post? No, I don't know. I, so much we'll, see, we'll, we'll see how much effort I want to put into this edit. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, if I'm not feeling that or great about oh, it. I censored it myself. <laughs> Jeez, those three minutes. Woo! All right, so we got legs today. We're hitting squats, 315-pound squats. Then after that, we're going to do deadlifts. Three sets of six. We're doing pause deadlifts. You'll see them in there, how I do them. It helps you kind of get complete control over a certain weight. So I'm going to be doing it with anywhere from 315 to 365, depending on how I feel. And then after that, as always, guys, building up them lats and them biceps, curls for the girls. I mean, we do this every vlog. I shouldn't even have to say it anymore. You're probably skipping over this part anyway because it's just repetitive. Let's get into the workout. Am I right, Johnny? You right, Will? Let's do it! All right, what's up, guys? So, welcome to today's workout. Uh, like I said earlier, heavy, heavy squat and deadlift day. Um, I know you guys see this a lot. I know you guys see me squatting on the channel a lot, deadlifting on the channel a lot. Uh, and I've had a couple people ask me why I do it so frequently. And uh, I just wanted to touch on that today. So, aside from the general um, idea that if you want to get better at something, you know, practice makes perfect, right? You have to do it over and over and over again. There's also, um, I think, a misconception in the fitness industry that you can get away with, you know, training arms all the time and, and you know, having a chest day and a back day, just working stuff out once a week and you'll get bigger. And, and that uh, misconception stems, I mean, you can do those workouts and you will see results. It's just not optimal if you're not on steroids. And obviously people who are on steroids aren't going to tell you that because it's not good for business if you talk about being on steroids. So training with a frequency setup like me, it's not common because what excels and what sells most in the industry is people who look freakish, people who look amazing. And most of those people, for the most part, uh, are using some kind of substance to help them. And that's the sad reality. It's not true of everyone. And there's lots of guys who are natural who do well. Um, but I think the large majority of what you see uh, are, are people who do use some kind of performance enhancing steroid, oral, whatever it may be. And it changes the way in which they train. Now when they portray that online, uh, a lot of people see that, they think that is probably the optimal way to train, and it's really not. If you're natural, you're gonna get better results from training with heavy compound lifts multiple times a week because that's the stimulus your body's going to rely on to really kind of charge growth. If you've got far, you know, an excess amount of hormones in your body, you may respond better nice. to just you know, higher, you know, higher volume, lighter weight, pumping, uh, you know, blood into the muscle. But if you're natural, your body, think about it, you know, it's trying to maintain homeostasis, the idea that it wants everything to be normal. If you are constantly hitting it with this stimulus of heavy, heavy lifting and heavy, heavy uh, kind of loading, the body has to have bigger, stronger, more dense muscle uh, to handle that. And if you give it to it regularly, uh, it's going to respond quicker because it understands I am now used to receiving this stimulus, you know, two to three times a week. I need more muscle mass because this is being charged at me. I need more density, more strength, more tensile power in the muscle because this is progressively getting harder and harder each week and it's being pushed at me with this much frequency. And that's how the body's going to respond. So I would never recommend doing just one day a week for each body part if you're a natural lifter. And that's why you're going to see on this channel so many uh, leg days and so many compounded days during the week. I never do just one body part in a day unless I'm doing maybe like a Saturday or a Sunday workout, which would be an off day for me and I'm trying to bring up a weak point. For the most part, you're always going to see in conjunction with a big compound lift, a, a, a assortment of body parts that are related to that getting worked out. So if I'm working like today, I'm working squats and then deadlifts, I work all my pulling muscles as well because I'm hitting my squats 
I'm hitting my deadlifts, which is a pulling posterior chain workout, and then I'm following that up with either leg work, or in today's case, I'm following it up with back work, doing all the other pulling muscles, being leg, or uh, being like lats, and uh, being biceps. Now, you'll see that if you've been following the channel for a little bit, you can see the progressive overloads working. I'm now over three plates on my squats for working sets. Um, I don't know where my one rep max is quite yet. We're gonna be testing that out in a few weeks. But these lifts right here, as you can see, 320, it is moving really well. And a lot of that too comes from form work. You know, I spend a lot of time warming up, a lot of time practicing my form, my groove, and researching the best way for my body to move. Uh, and that's something that's different for everyone, right? Your squat is not gonna look like mine, and my squat's not gonna look like the next guy. You gotta find a way um, to make it work the best for your body. And the same is true for bench press, for deadlift, for everything. There's not, there's overall principles, but not one form that works best. And so another great thing about frequency is the more you practice it, the better your form will get. And then, of course, using variations as well is going to help you progress. So as you can see here, doing pause deadlifts. I'm taking it about six inches off the ground, pausing, and then powering through the movement. And what that allows me to do is really control the weight and get that feeling of tightness at that midpoint where a lot of people lose the tightness around their back. And I'm using a light weight here for me, only 315 pounds. Um, and again, don't look at somebody's weight that they're doing and think that that's light weight. You have to go relative to the percentage of weight that's your max. So for my max being in the 500s, that's relatively light for me. For someone else, that could be closer to your max. So just because you see me doing that, don't think that that's what you have to do. You want to use a weight that's 50, 60% of your max. Now after that, here are the follow-up workouts. And these are the more bodybuilding style workouts you're going to see most people do. But I would never open with something like this because it's simply too isolated um, to achieve the, the best results. Instead here, when I go lighter on these, I'm focusing on, now that I've really banged out those harder sets and the, uh, the, intense, the intense stimulus, this is to take the muscle through a full range of motion to pump blood into it. So we're getting the same kind of workout in as well, you know, as a bodybuilder, mixing it in with that power lifting aspect. Uh, it's, you know, power bodybuilding. It's a, it's a way to really attack the muscle the, from the best possible angles. And by incorporating those multiple stimuli, you're going to uh, kind of initiate the most growth. Uh, last little bit here is uh, bicep curls. And uh, I like to do them seated, very light. You'll see I'm only doing 20s here. And I mix these in a lot because it helps with my mind-muscle connection. The arms start down at my side. And then I allow a little shoulder flexion to move the elbow forward, squeezing at the top, using something really, really light, going slow and controlled. And uh, it really kills. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a like if you did, subscribe for more, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video. See ya. Peace.